Hey everyone and welcome back to Roadside Coder and welcome to the 12th video of our Mernstack tutorial series. And in today's video, we are going to continue building our Node Zipper application. So today we are going to build an API for creating our notes, reading our notes, updating our notes and deleting our notes. Yes, we are going to build a CRUD API for our notes functionality by using Node.js and Express.js and using MongoDB as a backend just like we have been doing up until now. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here I've opened our node zipper folder with our backend folder and our frontend folder. So if you have not been following this series up until this point, I would highly recommend you to go and follow the series. Or if you are just interested in the backend part, you can just go on and watch this video where I've taught how you can create your own server. And this video where I've taught how you can create your own authentication. This authentication video is optional, but you should learn how you can create your own server. But if you already know how you can do that, then it's good. You can continue with this video. So I'm quickly going to go on to server.js file and I'm going to create a new route for our notes functionality. So we have created a route for users. And just like this, we are going to create another route for our notes functionality. So I'm going to write notes over here. And over here, instead of user routes, I'm going to write notes route or note routes. Okay. Now we need to create this file because this file doesn't exist currently. So we need to create this file inside of our routes folder. So let's create a new file called note routes.js. Just like our user routes file, we need to express, we need to import express. So let's go on and do that. And just like that, we are going to create, uh, I mean, we are going to take out the router from express.router. So let's do that as well. And let's export this. So module.exports equals router. Just like that. And let's go over here and import it inside of this file. So instead of user routes, I'm going to take note routes. There we go. Let's start our server. It shouldn't give us error. So npm start. There we go. Server started on port 5000 and MongoDB is connected. So let's test out our API. I've opened the Postman over here and let's try to make request. So URL, if you don't know URL, I, this is a variable inside of which I have put this localhost 5000 URL. So let's send it and you can see API is running. Okay, cool. Let's get back to our application and let's start building our routes. So the first thing first, before creating our routes, we need to create a model. So just like for the user, we have created this model with name, email, password, is admin. We need to create a model for our notes as well. So I'm going to go over here and type note model.js. And inside of the note model, I'm going to create a model. So let me quickly create it and then I'm going to explain it to you. All right, here we go. I've created a model for our notes. So let's see what's going on over here. We are importing mongoose from the mongoose dependency. And what we are doing over here is we are creating a new schema by mongoose.schema and we are giving it all of the things that it needs to create a note. So first of all, a note is going to have a title. It's going to have a content. It is going to have a category and it's going to have the user which uh, to which it belongs to. For example, if I created the note, then it's going to have the user information. Okay, this user created this note. And we are including the timestamps to see when the note was created and when was it updated. And just like that, below over here, we are creating a notes variable. Inside of it, we are going to create a mongoose.model with the name of notes. And we are going to supply this note schema that we have created over here. And then we are going to export it. So this is how you're going to create a note model. All right, now let's go inside of the note routes file and let's create the routes that we are going to need. So first of all, router dot route. So first route will be to get all of the notes. So in the slash, I'm going to write dot get request. So in, inside of this, I'm going to create a controller, but for now I'm going to leave it as it is as empty. Now I'm using a get request over here because we need to get all of the routes from the backend. And now the second request is going to be for creating the route. So I'm going to give it create and the request type will be for post because we are going to post the, the note 
to our backend. Okay, great. Now the third will be for updating and deleting and getting one single note. I'm going to duplicate it. Now, what are we going to need to update one single note? Yes, the ID of the note. We are, so we are going to add the ID over here. We are going to send the ID to our backend and it's going to give us that particular note. So first request will be for get. Let me put this down over here, just like this. So first request will be for the get. Second, to update our note, we are going to use put request. And third, to delete our note, we are going to use the delete request just like that so these are all the routes that we are going to use later in this video to create our api all right so for now i'm going to comment them out and first thing that we are going to create is our get route all right so let's go on inside of our controllers folder and i'm going to create a new file for notes controller dot js okay note controller dot js i've corrected the name of the file so first thing that I, that we are going to import is our notes model. So once note equals require from us, we are going to need a model. Right. And the second thing that we are going to use is async handler, which I'm going to uh, import later. So let's first create our route. So let me give this a name of get notes. So get notes is going to have async handler uh, covered in async handler. And inside of it, we are going to create an async function and it will take request comma response. Let me import async handler. All right, inside of it, we are going to write our MongoDB query now. So what do we want to do? We want to find all of the nodes that belong to a particular user. So const notes equals await note dot find so we are going to use the find query of mongodb now inside of this find we are supposed to give a particular user's id but we don't but we have no way to do that right now so what we want to do is whenever user makes this request it should send his own id but we don't want him to do that manually so what we are going to do we are going to create a middleware to achieve that and you're going to see in just a minute how i can do that how we can create a middleware so let's just keep it like this for now. What this will do is this will find all of the nodes. So let's just response.json and currently we don't have any nodes in our backend. So we'll just get this as an empty array. So I'm going to supply it as nodes. So let's take this gets no get nodes. Uh, let me export this module.exports get nodes. All right. And now let's import this get notes over here, get notes. Yep. Just like that. Now let's test it out if it's working or not. So I'm going to go to the postman and let's create a new folder inside of it for our request so that every request are in, you know, structured format. So let's say notes API inside of this note API. I'm going to create a new request. This is just optional. It's not really necessary. So get slash API slash notes yep and inside of this i'm going to supply our url slash api slash notes let's test it out and you can see we have gotten an empty array because there are no notes inside of our database all right cool so let's create a middleware first so i'm gonna go inside our middlewares folder and i'm going to create a new file auth middleware.js okay so what are we going to do inside of it first of all we're going to need a jwt token so you know what i'm going to quickly write this file and then i'm going to explain what i've done over here all right there we go i've created this file now let's see what's going on over here so i've imported jwt user model and our async handler over here and we are naming this middleware as protect because it is going to protect our API from any unauthorized access. So what's going to happen is whenever user logs in, we are going to put this protect function before this get notes API. So what's going to happen is user ha has to pass through this middleware to reach this API. 
and when it passes through this middleware what's going to happen it's going to have three parameters request response and next so it's going to declare a new variable called token and then it's checking from our request that is user sending his authorization header over here so it's going to check the headers for authorization header if it's present and if the authorization has a token which starts with bearer because as you might know we are sending our bearer token from our front end so it's if these two things uh, are true it's going to go inside this bracket now it's going to check so i'm basically verifying the token over here which was sent by the user by these two lines so i'm taking out the token from inside of it by splitting it so it has bearer and a token string inside of it so we are removing the bearer part and just taking the token and then we are decoding by using jwt.verify token and process.env jwt secret remember jwt secret that we have created in our .env file we are using that jwt secret to verify the user now if this fails then it's going to go to our catch block and it's going to give this error not authorized token failed but if it works it's going to find the user by id and it's going to remove uh, leave the password so that we don't get the password from the database and from this decoded id is going to find this user and it's going to put this user in request of this middleware and then we are going to call this next function which will send it to this api so this is what is happening inside of this middleware also if this fails if this is false then it's going to go over here and it's going to throw a new error not authorized no token because that means no token was sent by user so great let's just use this protect with our notes route so protect comma get notes let me import it yep there we go now let's try to send our api once again and you're going to see this error not authorized no token because we are not sending any token so let's go to authorization and try to send a token so bear a token so i'm going to tell you an easy way how you can do that just go to your user and auth and after you log in you're going to get this token just copy it up go back over here you can put the copied string just like this and let's try to send it and you can see it's working fine let's try to hamper this token and send it it's going to show token failed because this is not a correct token great let's move on and let's create our create notes api so our read api is done now for creating our create notes api i'm going to create a controller over here for create note so this doesn't exist currently so let's go to our note controller and create this so const create note async handler and inside of this we are going to write our controller so let's create a new function async request comma response and inside of this we are going to take title content and category from our body and let's check if title doesn't exist or content doesn't exist or category doesn't exist then we are going to throw an error so response dot status is going to be 400 it's going to throw a 400 error so throw new error please fill all the fields great but if user has sent all of these three things then we are going to do this we are going to create a new variable and we are going to create a new note from our notes model that we have created so we are going to pass the user that was currently logged in now watch over here how we are using this so request dot user dot id okay i forgot to add this inside of our find as well so let me just add this to over here as well so it's going to find our notes with the help of this user id and getting back to our creates note api so what's happening it's it's creating a new note over here so and it's storing these things in the database title content category and in the user field it's going to take the request dot user dot id now remember this is coming from our middleware over here remember we are setting request dot user over here so this is where it's coming from so it's saving that 
and now we are successfully saving now we have created a new note over here and with the help of note.save we are saving this into our database and after we have saved it into our database it's going to send back the created note in this variable of created note and we are going to receive it just over here and we are going to send it to our user so this is how we can create a note now let's quickly jump back to postman and try to create our note by using this api so here we are let me create a new request for post slash api slash notes slash create okay one thing i forgot to import it in our notes route so yeah create note let me import it this create note over here let's import it right over here also this route will also be protected so protect just like that now it's time to test it out so let's create so url slash api slash notes slash create it's going to be a post request inside of the authorization we're going to have a bearer and token is already there as you can see now inside of the body we need to give it the body that is title content and what was the other thing category so let's set it raw and json we're going to send it as json so yep my first note content hello world and category oh let's put this as myself yeah, okay. so let's try to send it and there we go we have successfully created a new note congratulations so let's analyze this what have we gotten back we have gotten an id and we've gotten the user id that is creating that is we are creating this note that is the token of the user that we are using over here that user's id has been put into the database the title the content the category and the timestamps that we had put into our model so let's see in our database if it's reflecting or not. All right, I've opened our MongoDB panel over here and let's go to the collections. And it should have created a notes. Yeah, it's just created a notes document over here. Just like this, there we go. Now let's try to test our first API now of getting the notes. So let's send it and we should get the notes. Yep, there we go. We are getting an array of nodes. Currently, there is only one node, so just we are just getting one node over here. Let's try to create another node. So let's add my second node. All of this each month. Back. So part number twelve. Today I'm creating part number twelve. And let's, create let's create this by sending it, and you can see we have created it. And let's go to over here and send it. Yep, you can see we have gotten an array of objects with both of my nodes inside of it. Great. We have created the create API and read API. Now it's time to create single reading API. See if what if we want to fetch just a single note, what are we going to do then? Let's find out. So here I'm back in my notes routes folder. So let me put these down for now and let me uncomment this out. Yep. So we are going to create a get API for with our ID. Let's give the name of this controller as get note by ID. And I'm going to create this inside of our notes controller const get note by id async handler inside of the async handler I'm going to create a async function and let me quickly create this function because it's going to be really easy so just like this we have created this so let me explain what's going on over here so we are querying our database with the help of request.params.id so how are we getting this api so you might remember we have put this colon id over here so it's going to have the id so in the api url so we are fetching this id from the url don't worry i'm going to uh, show this in just a minute so i'm going to fetch this by typing request dot parameters dot id parameters or params dot id so we're taking this id and we're finding by id so this is a mongodb query find by id so when this id is found if so if this id is found we're going to send it response.json and the note otherwise if this id is not found we are going to send note not found and this i don't know why i've written this over here let me just remove this yeah let's test it out 
So inside of our Postman, let me take any one of these IDs. Let me copy this ID and I'm going to create a new API. So add request, get slash API slash notes slash colon ID. Yeah, slash now we need to give the this colon id over here so just po i've just pasted this id over here and let's try to get this let's see if it works or not okay it gives us this error not found let's try to see what's happening over here of course we haven't uh, exported this from here to our notes folder it, that is why it's giving this error so let me copy this and export this from here and let's import it right over here just like that now it should work let's send it request is not defined let's see of course request is not defined i'm so stupid we have to send this request comma response over here see these are minor mistakes that you need to be careful about so when i send it now you can see we are getting one single note over here let's now move on to creating our update api so i'm gonna put this down and let's creating let's get on to creating our put or update api so just like before we need to protect this id because this is tampering the data in our database so only the user that has created can only protect can only edit his own note so i'm going to protect it and the name of this api is going to be update Alright, so let's go inside of the notes controller and create const update note async handler and create a new function request comma response and inside of this let's get down to creating our logic so there are a few things that we are going to need to update our note first and foremost is going to be the id of the note so you already know where we are getting the id from we are getting the id from the params so we're going to get that id from there and what are the other things that we are going to need we are going to need the title content and category that will be updated by the user so let me write const title content and category Oops. So we are destructuring all of these three, these three things from our body. And now we need to find the node that we are going to update. So we're going to query the MongoDB by find by ID. And since we are getting the ID from our params, so we are passing it over here. All right. So we have found our node successfully. So let's check if this node belongs to the user who is requesting to update this node. So what are we going to use? We're going to type node.user. So whatever the node we are getting over here, we're going to compare it with the currently logged in user to string. So the user ID will be if it's not equal to the currently logged in user that is request dot user dot underscore ID dot to string. So if it's not equal, we're going to throw an error. You cannot perform this action. Now we're checking if we are getting a note back from this ID. Now, even if this ID exists or not, we are, we need to check that as well. What if user is putting a wrong ID? So we're checking if, if the ID is right and we are getting something inside of this note, then what we just need to do, we just need to update this, the details of this note. So first of all, we need to update the title with the title that we are getting from the user. So note.title equals title. Great. We have updated all of these three things. Now it's time to save this back into our database. So const updated, let's say updated note, and I'm going to save it by await note dot save. So this will save this note back into our database. And let's give this response back to our user that we have updated it. So we are going to give the updated note response to the user. Just like that and okay now we need to write the else part so if note is not found what happens if the note is not found so we're just going to throw an error of note not found just like this there we go okay now let's test it out into our postman but first i need to export this and receive it over here just like this now let's see if it's working or not. 
I'm going to create a new request for put slash APIs, whoops, slash APIs slash notes slash ID. So there's going to be a put request. So I'm going to set put over here. Oops, put, yep. And let's use our API slash notes slash the ID of the note. So this is going to be the same ID that we are going to use the this note. So I'm going to update the title over here. So my first note. So I'm going to update this title. So title will be my first note for this app. So I'm going to this app over here. Now apart for from this title, everything is going to be same. So I'm just going to put that as it is. So let me take this content and category from over here, put this just like that. So let's send it. Not authorized, no token. Obviously we have not putting any token. Now it should work. Let's send it. No dot save is not a function. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, obviously we're not supposed to use this. We're supposed to use this because we are saving this note, right? So we, by typing capital N, we are using our notes model. So we are supposed to use this. Let's send it again. And it has updated it. My first note for this app. Yep. Let's go to all notes and see if it has been updated or not. Yep. There we go. My first note for this app. Great. Now let's write our delete API. So in the note routes, let's bring this over here and this delete. It's also going to be protected and I'm going to name it delete note. Let's go to notes controller and create a new controller. It's const delete note is handler async. All right. Inside of this, what do we need to do? We first need to do the same thing. We first need to find the note by the use of this ID. So let me just copy this line up. So we are finding the note if this note exists or not. And then what we are going to do, we're going to do this thing. We're going to check if this note belongs to this user or not, because if it doesn't belongs it, then user cannot delete this. He can't perform this action. So we're checking that. And now if we get the note successfully back, then we will check. So if note, whoops, I think I wrote something wrong. Yep. If note. So then we're just simply going to make a request to re remove this note. So await note dot remove. So this will remove this note from our database and this, and let's send the message note removed. Otherwise, if the note isn't found, we're going to send this error note not found. Let's copy it up and paste it. It's a pretty simple operation. So note not found. And let's just export this API and test it out. Let's create a new request for delete slash API slash notes slash ID. I mean, uh, colon ID. So let's bring that request slash notes. Yep. Just like this one. And we are going to use delete for this one. Remember this is a delete request. Okay. Now uh, also we need to provide this a uh, bearer token just like that. And now let's find out, find out if it's work or not. So let's send it and note remove. Let's check this out. If I try to use the get note, it should give us an error now. Yep. Note not found. And in the all notes as well, it should be just one single note over here. Yeah, just like that. So congratulations, we have successfully created a CRUD API for creating, deleting, updating and reading our notes. Now in our next video, we are going to create the front end functionality for the same. We are going to create the note in our front end by using this API, read, update and delete all of that in our next video. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel by going to youtube.com slash roadside coder. And if you are not yet following this playlist, just go to this playlist section and view full playlist and you're going to find whole of this playlist over here. We just have two or three videos remaining in this playlist. I believe the two videos apart from this video, two more videos are going to come and then we are going to finish this series. So don't forget to save this playlist by clicking over here and subscribe to the channel with bell notification turned on for more such awesome videos. So thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.